Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us in this series. So we'll start off by introducing thin lens terminology. Then we'll analyze the image of an object right outside the focal point using two techniques, thin lens equation and ray tracing. Then we'll have another video doing the same, but now the object is inside the focal point. And we'll conclude with some worked out problems. So please like, subscribe, and share this on your social media. So let's begin. So thin lens parameters. First, let's introduce those parameters. So first of all, we'll talk about the lenses. So here is, start here, this one, whenever we draw something like this, this is a converging lens. Okay. Some people use arrows up and down like this to indicate the same thing, a converging or convex lens. When the shape is like this, is a basically a diverging lens or a concave lens. Okay. Again, for simplicity, sometimes people use it like this with the tips of the arrows flipped. Okay. But in all the examples here in this video, we'll use a converging lens. So we'll do this. So for converging lens, this right here, it's called the center of the vertex. Right? This here is called the focal point. Here also is called the focal point. Yeah, and if you've had a magnifying glass, this is a converging lens. And if you put it out in the sun, if you move it, you know, over, you know, grass or something like that, or even a piece of paper, at some point you'll get a sharp focus. That is that focal point that we're talking about. Okay. The distance between the lens and the focal points is called the focal length. This is called the optical axis okay, or the lens axis. Okay, this white line right here. Now, Obviously, a lens by itself is not going to do us any good. We have to place objects in the scene. So usually, traditionally, we put objects on the left side for a single lens. Okay? Light flows from left to right. And this is the object. And the object casts an image. And let's just say this is its image. Right? And this is the object. The distance between the object and the lens is called D sub O. It's called the object distance. And the distance between the image and the lens is D sub I, or the image distance. The height of the object is H sub O, and the height of the image is H sub I. Okay. These are the parameters that we use for a lens. Okay. Now the focal length sometimes, well, not sometimes, it's actually denoted by F. Okay? So I have several symbols. H I, F, D I, D O, and H O. Okay. So where do these come into play? These come into play in the lens equation. Okay. So the lens equation, so this is the equation right here. Thin lens equations, but thin lens right here. It's one over the focal length. Is one over the distance to the object, plus one over the distance to the image. That is the thin lens equation. Okay. 
And again, F, D, O, D, I were just identified in the previous slide. The magnification is denoted by M. And by definition, it's negative the distance to the image over the distance to the object, which is equal to the height of the image or the height of the object. Okay. And the last one, the power, the power of a lens, by definition, is one over the focal length. Okay. Now, here the focal length, distance object, distance to image, height of the image, height of the object, they could all be of any units as long as they're the same. So here, if we're using inches, this has to be in inches, and this has to be inches for things to make sense. Same thing with the di over do or hi over ho. As long as they're the same units, that is fine. But for the power of a lens, f has to be in meters. And then the power comes out in diopters. Okay? The unit is d. Right? That's the unit for power. Magnification is unitless. Because it's just a ratio of distances, okay? And how big one object is, or the image is, compared to the object. Okay? So now, these have rules. To put in F, to put in DO, to put in DI, same thing with HI and HO. We have to follow a set of rules to identify their signs as they appear in the scene, basically. Okay? So let's go over something called sign convention to, ident to identify the sign for all of these. And from that, we can infer certain things about the problem by just understanding those signs. And you'll see that whenever we work problems for this section, okay? So let's begin with first the focal length. The focal length F, again, it's the distance between the lens and the focal point, is positive for a converging lens. If it's a diverging lens, you know, a lens that like this or like this, it's going to be negative. So again, what I meant, we infer that from a problem. If we're given a problem, say, hey, you have the object is here, the image is here, tell me something about the lens, and if the answer came out to be negative for the focal length, we know it's a diverging lens. If the answer came out to be positive, then it's a converging lens. So that's what I mean, we can infer stuff from the problem, depending on the sign of these quantities. So that's the focal length. The object distance is positive when the object is real. Usually, again, as I said, the objects are taken to the left of the lens. They are real and they emit light. That's a real object. The distance is positive. Otherwise, it's negative if it's on the other side of the lens. And when does that happen? When we start talking about uh, multiple lenses or compound lenses, the object could be on the other side of one lens. And uh, basically, in that case, it's a virtual object. And it is this, if this distance is considered negative. Okay? The image distance is positive if it's formed on the right side of the lens. It's a real image. So the image, if it forms here, this distance is taken to be positive. Okay, and if it's formed here on the left, if the image is here, this is the image, then this distance is negative. That's what they mean by that, okay? And this is the image. It's not the object, right? The object could be here or could be here or whatever, and we'll see different cases. But we're just looking at the image right now, okay?
The object height is positive if the object is upright, negative otherwise. So usually the object is usually, is, is usually taken straight up. We don't start a problem with an object pointing like this. We start a problem, the object is pointing up, H sub O is positive. If for whatever reason, the object is pointing down again with a compound lens, then its height is considered negative. So anything pointing down is negative. Anything pointing up is positive. Image height is positive if the image is upright. So if the image is over here and it's upright, for example, anywhere, then it is positive. This is the image now. If it's pointing this way, it's negative. It's height. It's considered negative. This is H sub I. H sub I. Okay. So negative is this is less than zero. Negative. Negative. This is positive. And this is positive. The magnification is positive if the image is upright, the same orientation as the object, and it's usually virtual. Okay. In other words, if the image is the same. Upright. So if you have an object right here, for example, this is object, and this is its image. This image is virtual, and the magnification will become positive. Okay. And if it's inverted, if the image is right here, then the magnification is negative. Okay. Now, what's a virtual image versus a real image? A virtual image means an image that light appears to be coming from. A real image is a light that actually goes through and forms. Okay? We'll be talking more about those through the examples. What's the difference between a real image and a virtual image? But that's what we need to know. This, these sign conventions are very important for us to do the problem correctly. So this is for the magnification. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to take an object, put it right outside the focal length or the focal point, and look at its image using ray tracing and using the thin lens equation. Hope to see you there. Thank you very much. Bye.